Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at the 2022 MLB All Star starters and see whether or not they will be good long term investments. Sports cards investments, I know you can kind of chop that up to however you personally believe they'll be worth. What I want to look at this to be more accurate is to see which players will maintain value or at least have value in the future and which ones won't. I'm going to rank them on this tier list to really give an idea of where I think these players' values are currently and where I think they'll actually be in the long run. All these players, every single one of them will have opportunities to sell in the short to midterm. I don't know exactly when or how. If I did, I'd be really rich because no one can tell that type of information. But I'm looking at these players and kind of discussing where I think they can project to be based off their all-time status. One thing I do want to know, I'm only doing the starters and the one starting pitcher only because if I did everybody, this would be the longest video ever and it would be super, super complicated. So without further ado, let's start in the American League. We're going to go from catcher all the way to the DH. At catcher, we have Alejandro Kirk. Alejandro Kirk has come into the league by storm. I'm really happy he's doing so well. Kind of like a small guy who's behind the dish. You can just hit. And he always has hit, but he's been unconventional. It's kind of like Moneyball when you have Kevin Euclid and they're like, why is he good? It's because he gets on base. It's kind of the same thing. Alejandro Kirk just rakes. He just hits well. I have him as a C investment, however, currently just because long-term a catcher is just a really hard player to really buy into and to have and maintain value. In the last 20, 30 years, you can look at Buster Posey, Yadier Molina, Salvador Perez, Joe Maurer. There's hardly any actually valuable catchers like there were in the past. Even in the past, you have Johnny Bench who carries significant value. You have Yvonne Rodriguez. You have a couple others, but that's basically it for the catcher's position. So for that reason, I have him as a C. At A, we have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I have him as an A-. Vlad, I know, is having a down year. He has like a 135 OPS plus, but he still looks good. The fact that he can still have a bad year and not be himself and still have a good year for majority of most players in Major League Baseball, I think is excellent. He's going to be a David Ortiz type player, in my opinion, long, long term. He'll just be a slugger for many years. I think he'll play really well into his late 30s just because of who he is as a person, as long as he can maintain a good weight. For that reason, I think A- is a fair place for Vlad. Jose Altuve, probably one of the most difficult players to discuss on this list. You have people who just hate Jose Altuve because of the 2017 Astros cheating scandal. People have discussed how Altuve actually did not cheat and a whole bunch of other things. He's one of the players that supposedly did not participate in that as much as he could. But still, I think that will have an impact on his values long term. I don't think he's a surefire Hall of Famer either. He's a great second baseman, probably one of the best second basemen we've seen in a very long time. But he's only around 45 career war at age 32, maybe 33, I believe. And for that reason, he has a lot to work to do. And if he can continue to hit and get 3,000 hits, if he can play really well into his late 30s, then I think he'll get there. I don't think he's a bad buy or anything, but I think he's a B plus is a pretty good place for Jose Altuve on this list. Next, we have Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers is a very interesting candidate because he hits very, very well, but he does not play good defense. <laughs> At some point, that's okay because we pay for offense. We pay for home runs. There's that famous commercial from years ago where it's chicks dig the long ball and the pitchers aren't getting attention because they aren't hitting home runs. It's the same thing. You know, Rafael Devers, I think he's a B plus just because I think he'll have long-term value at the Red Sox for the next five to 10 years, and that can help his values in the sports card hobby. After him, we have Tim Anderson at shortstop. I give Tim Anderson a C plus. Kind of a tough rating for Tim Anderson. Great ball player. Just plays for the White Sox. A little older. Doesn't really have the stats to really make him a fan favorite. Never going to win MVP in my personal opinion. If he does, that's great. I just don't think he has that capability, and I think long-term he won't carry much value outside of the Tim Anderson super collectors. Next up, we have Aaron Judge. You don't believe in Aaron Judge at this point, then I'm sorry. He's just good. He's very good. But the problem with Aaron Judge is he debuted basically at his big year at age 24, and then had some injury seasons, and that's kind of hurt him a little bit. Mike Trout's injury prone and actually had more injuries than Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. So I'm sure Yankees fans are sick of people talking about if he can stay healthy. He's been relatively healthy the last little bit. It's just maintaining this MVP all-star pace for the next five to six years. That's something he needs to do because he missed those five to six years from age 19. 19 to 24, like some players like Juan Soto get. For that reason, A- minus is fair just because who knows what he'll do. I think if he can be good, I do not think Hall of Fame is completely out of the question. I just think it's extremely hard for him to get to that point because, you know, he's a big dude. He has to maintain good defensive prowess in the outfield while still hitting an elite level. Next up is Mike Trout. Mike Trout's hurt again. He's on the IL. He'll be missing the All-Star game, but I still think even with his injuries, he's an A+. And the reason I say that is because he's a three-time AL MVP, plus he has 
three AL MVP runner-ups, I believe. And on top of that, he is just the player of our generation. He had Albert Pujols in the 2000s, Mike Trout in the 2010s. Who knows in the 2020s, maybe Soto. Who knows? We'll have to see what happens. But regardless, Mike Trout, I think, is the A-plus on this list. We see Jeter, we see Griffey. They maintain serious value because it's the guy everybody was chasing and collecting back in the day. Next up, Giancarlo Stanton. This is another hard one. There's actually a few really tough players to rank on this list. He is at 370-ish home runs, 45 war. I think if he can get to 500 home runs and to 55 to 60 war as a primary DH the rest of his career, I can see him potentially squeezing into the Hall of Fame too. Very hard candidate for Giancarlo Stanton. He has an MVP. He has all-star appearances. He has a lot of great numbers, but a B plus is where I'm putting him because I think it'll be harder for him versus Aaron Judge at this point, which sounds crazy because he has more cumulative stats and more hardware at this age for Stanton. But Aaron Judge just looks like he'll have a better next few years than Stanton is going to. So for that reason, I think B plus suits Stanton well, gives a lot of opportunity, and I think he might be able to get there. Next up is Shohei Otani. <laughs> this list is full of very tough people to rank, but I give him an A right now. He's made me a believer this year. In the past, I've been critical of Otani just because he has had injuries, but he's had two healthy seasons so far, knock on wood, literally this wood desk. But I think if he can have just two or three more years after this one, how he's doing the last two years, you know, in 2021 and 2022, if he can do the same thing in 2023, 2024, 2025, I think he doesn't need to have 50, 60, 70 war. He just needs to be a very specific, unique type of player to make that Hall of Fame and to have his cards to continue to increase in value. With Otani, he has the international aspect. And on top of that, he just has like some sort of value that we see kind of like Babe Ruth had. Not saying he's Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was better in my personal opinion. You can say he played with plumbers, all that argument. But in regards to his competition back then, Babe Ruth is still more dominant. Otani is very interesting though, because he's actually made his pitching much more elite this year than he has in the past. With elite pitching and really above average hitting, that makes him a very, very good player to collect. And a starting pitcher for the American League of Shane McClanahan, I think he is a great pitcher. I'm going to give him a C though, just because pitchers are tough and he's not really on track to do much. Either way, great pitcher and I give him a C. Next up, he's actually replacing Jose Altuve at second base as Andres Jimenez in the American League. I give him a C plus. He's been great for the Indians. Congrats, Indians, on getting him in the Francisco Lindor trade. He is everything you could have hoped for. He's probably having just as good of a year, if not better than Francisco Lindor. As we can see, he's an all-star and Lindor is not. But Lindor obviously carries other things Jimenez does not in regards to popularity and bringing in fan attendance. But Andres Jimenez, he isn't going to be a great player. For but he has to do more. I think he's only 23 years old, which is great for making his first all-star appearance. But I think a C plus is a fair place for him right now. And if he can do well the next few years, it could go even higher, maybe to a B plus or so range. After him, we have Byron Buxton. Byron Buxton is playing for Mike Trout. Buxton is in his late 30s. I think he's 28 or 29 with about 19 career war. He actually is more injury prone. It's different than Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is usually, I know he had the oblique strain when he swung, but a lot of this stuff is kind of freak stuff. Buxton also has freak stuff, but it continues to happen. So it's hard to not label him that. For that reason, B- minus for long-term value. I think that it's a tough person to rank again for the American League, but I think B- minus is where he is. He could go up to a B or B plus for long-term twins collectability because he's a twins player with so much potential. His peak year in his career, whatever that's going to be, could be MVP caliber. For that reason, I don't think he's a bad buy, but for me, I'm not really targeting Byron Buxton. All right, National League. Wilson Contreras at catcher. C plus. C plus for a catcher. Same reason Alejandro Kirk, but he has more hardware than Alejandro Kirk currently has. Plus, he's a Cubs player. Cubs fans buy Cubs players like crazy. They are always picking up their players. For that reason, I think he has more long-term collectability than Alejandro Kirk and most other catchers. At first base, we have Paul Goldschmidt. This year has been really, really big for Paul Goldschmidt's legacy and Hall of Fame odds. Right now, he's about 55 career war, 300 home runs. Currently, age 34. If you can get to 400, that even helps his odds. But I think he's an A-. minus. I think he's more of a shoe-in than a lot of players, even Jaron Carlos Stan for the Hall of Fame, especially if he can somehow continue to stay hot and win an MVP this year. Helps his odds even more. After him, we have Jazz Chisholm at second base. I give Jazz Chisholm a B minus. Could easily be a B. B minus just because he's figuring it all out still. I would love to see him be on base a little bit more, but he has done a really good job against right-handed pitching. Against lefties, he doesn't play much. That's a hard thing because if you want a player to be a franchise player, you want him to be good against lefties and righties and not to be benched. I don't know if that's the managerial decision by Don Mattingly. Either way, it's kind of what's been happening. So B minus, in my opinion, for Jazz. 
One thing I'll say though is Jazz has the potential to really draw a crowd and he has the potential to be a long-term collective player if he can maintain his health because he's so exciting and so unique as a player. At third base, we have Manny Machado, an A- in my opinion. I think he's also on a Hall of Fame path. This one's debatable because he might not have long-term collectability due to his personality issues. I think, honestly, Padres fans, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but he seems like he's doing great for the Padres. Doesn't seem like a cancer. Seems like he's been a good teammate. Hasn't had any major headlines. He's been good for the Padres this year. He's around 4.2 war. About to hit 50 war for his career before age 30. It's extremely impressive for Manny Machado. One of the forgotten superstars of the last 10 years, in my opinion. After Machado, we have Trey Turner. Another hard person to rank just because compared to most Hall of Fame shortstops, he's just not on a Hall of Fame path. He's in his late 30s. He is the stolen base player of the last five or six years. But it's just one of those things where if you're stealing 30, 40 bags now, that's awesome. It doesn't happen often. But back in the day, they were stealing 100 bags. You know, Ricky Henderson. And even if you want to look at Mari Wills, my dad's favorite player going up just because because he was so dynamic. He's not that. He's an okay defensive shortstop. He just has a lot of offensive upside. So I don't think he's a bad buy or a good buy. It's too early to say what's going to happen at Trey Turner. So I gave him a solid B right in the middle of the pack. After Trey Turner, we have Ronald Acuna Jr. I gave him an A. I could argue A or A minus for Ronald Acuna Jr. simply because he's not having a great age 24 season. But I want to remind you, this is his age 24 season. <laughs> he's still super young and he's in his what? Third all-star game. And he's been great. I know this year he only has like 1.3 1.5 war. And if you're confused what war is, it's wins above replacement. That means they're worth a specific number of wins above an average player at their position. So Acuna so far this year has added 1.3 wins. Two war is an average MLB player for the full year. Five war is an all-star, eight war is an MVP caliber player. So he's only been worth about 1.3 on pace for about three to four. So not a huge year for Acuna, but he comes off an ACL tear. You can't fault the guy for that purpose. So for that reason, I give him an A. I think he'll have a big second half and a big age 25 season. Next up, Jock Peterson in the outfield. I give him a C. Reason for that is just because he doesn't have a ton of value in regards to long-term collectability because he's not that awesome of a player. He's an all-star, fantastic baseball player, better than you and I will ever be. But in comparison to like long-term collectability, it's going to be tough. I'm not sure how much of a fan favorite he is in regards to specific teams because he's played for the Dodgers, the Braves, now the Giants. Who knows how these players are going to be collected long-term by these fan bases because they didn't stay their entire career in one place. Makes it more difficult than a player like Dale Murphy, who had a couple MVPs, even though he's not in the Hall of Fame, he was with the Braves and was a fan favorite. It's a little bit different. So for that reason, I give Jock Peterson a C. Mookie Betts, I put him as an A. He's at 53 war at age 28. I think he's on a Hall of Fame path, similar to Machado. I think Mookie has more appeal than Manny Machado, two World Series rings, an MVP. He's on the Dodgers, which has more fan favorite appeal than the Padres does. So for that reason, I give Mookie Betts an A. Similar reasons for Bryce Harper, besides the championships, he has two MVPs. He's going to be a fan favorite in Philadelphia. I don't think national fans hate him as much as they used to, but I give him an A because I think he's on a Hall of Fame path and he'll be one of the premier players we look back on from the 2010s and the 2020s when we're 20 years down the road. And the starting pitcher for the National League, whether he deserves it or not, you could argue that Sandy Alcantara is the guy who actually deserves it, is Clayton Kershaw. I give him a solid A. I could argue A plus as well because I think he's the best pitcher that we've seen in a very long time. You could say DeGrom had a better peak, but DeGrom's peak was extremely short because of health purposes. But Clayton Kershaw is still pitching well. He has the lowest whip of a starting pitcher in a very long time. I think the last 100 years whip is basically independent from fielding how he pitches, and that's a very good thing. So if Clayton Kershaw can continue to be who he is for the next three or four years, he'll easily get to 3,000 strikeouts and maybe even 200 wins. And for that reason, I think Clayton Kershaw is an A, arguably an A+. Jeff McNeil, I give him a C. He's replacing Jazz Chisholm at second base. Great ball player, a little bit older, age 28 or 29 season, and he's not really done that much in comparison to other players. And William Contreras, the brother of Wilson Contreras, very interesting story. I'm giving a C+. I know he's a primary catcher, and he's a little bit younger than we're seeing with Wilson Contreras. And because he's playing for the Braves, a fan base that really collects their players, he's an all-star this year, so young. I think that C-plus isn't out of the realm of possibility as being a good long-term buy. I know that's not fair to Alejandro Kirk. I like Kirk a lot. I think he's fun. But I think William Contreras with the Braves is a little bit better for potential. Anyway, those are my picks, guys. Let me know in the comments below who you agree, disagree with. And other than that, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.